Uh, but uh, so far, uh, in my view, black always had sufficient um, sufficient counter chances, and uh, there were a number of games that can be quoted. I think one of them is uh, Topple of Kramnik from one of the analysis when Kramnik won quite nicely. It's a very complicated game, and many many games played by Nigel Short. Uh, um, that also could demonstrate the Blacks' uh, uh, defensive counter-attacking resources. Uh, one of the games Nigel won against Tian Timon in their uh, final ca candidates match in 1993. Uh, so uh, we could look, of course, in, in, in great depth in this position, but uh, now we're just trying to, to have you know to have general review of all these options. I would refrain from. Uh, uh, trying to be very precise and giving recommendations. So, as I could say, uh, there are many, uh, many options. There are always, you know, a way to uh, shift from a very positional game to a more complicated positions. And uh, you always have to remember about some nuances because if you don't like this, this type of position when White is taken on f6, there's always an option to play knight bd7. I played it once against Karpov, and then I also played. Uh, at least once more against Topolov in rapid chess in 98. So the idea, it was first introduced, I guess, by Yefim Geller. And he won a very nice game against Alexander Belovsky in 1979 Soviet Championship, where 55-year-old Geller uh, won very convincingly ahead of the field of very young players, as myself and Arthur Yusupov. So knight bd7 uh, prevents bishop takes f6 because now knight takes on f6 and white achieves nothing. But on the other hand, it uh, it uh, allows White to uh, use this this uh, uh, slight discoordination of black pieces to play rook c1, and after bishop b7 to take on d5. Now, as you can see, knight takes d5 doesn't work because after knight d5, uh, bishop d5, bishop e7, queen e7, then rook uh, takes pawn on c7. So. Uh, that's that's quite an important uh, quite an important uh, uh, nuance because after c d5 black has to take on d5 with with a pawn and then after castle c5 uh, white could play queen a4 and after a6 take on c5 d x c5 rook d1 queen b6 queen b3 and this position is is proved to be better for white um, uh, I played with Karpov there were two games one side uh, drew in game 20 25. I think game 25 in our first long uh, endless match. Then I tried even queen a7 in this position, trying to keep queens queens aboard, uh, but it was not it was not sufficient. So Karpov got a, s a substantial edge and he uh, nearly won the game, which could uh, mean a total disaster for me because score was already 5-0 in Karpov's favor. Uh, later, you know, many years later, in 40 years later, I played against Topolov. It was rapid chess, and so Topolov couldn't uh, couldn't repeat. Uh, all Karpov's moves was the same effect, and eventually, you know, I, my breakthrough in the center d5, d4 proved to be proved to be more than sufficient, not only to equalize but also to uh, mm, topple Topolov's uh, uh, defense. So you could go knight bd7, but then you should be aware about other dangers in this position. So you can't have, you know, uh, uh, best from the both worlds. You always make a choice now. Black more often uh, uh, sticks to bishop b7, falling to the position that we discussed uh, um, before. And so far, uh, it's the, the conclusion is the, this, this line, this, as I said, most celebrated line in the history of Queen Gambit uh, uh, declined, so-called tartakover makagono bandarevsky line, offers Black good counter chances. And that's one of the reasons why White is now very often looking for uh, adventures in uh, alliance with Bishop F4.